Hi everyone, it is now July 31st and I wanted to record a very quick update video on our situation now. We have a plan, a surgeon, and a hospital. So um, it's hard to really remember what exactly I told you in the last video because I was um, kind of all over the place with being so upset and was a little intoxicated. So um, I'm going to try and, and backtrack and remember stuff as best as possible. And I will put this on silent so it won't be a distraction. Uh, okay. So the last thing that I actually first, before I get into this, I want to send out a huge thank you to everybody who has sent me comments, messages, emails, the support that I have received, un unbelievable. Um, I don't have close family uh, around me, so to have complete strangers on the internet give me the support that they have, the support that like a close family would give me, I am so very thankful for that and I really appreciate everything that you've said, everything that you've offered. We now have like amazing offers in place of like a place to stay by someone I've never personally met um, face to face. I've only known through YouTube. We have people offering to put money into a GoFundMe. Like I have never met 99% of these people and I'm just really blown away. And it's really nice that people would even go out of their way to leave a comment on a video like that. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Um, so to backtrack, I think the last thing that I told you, we were super upset because the hospital that I wanted to take him to was in the States. I'm Canadian. I have no health insurance for the state, so I have to pay everything out of pocket. And the quote that we received for the cardiac catheterization procedure is like $60,000 and I just don't have that kind of money to pay for something like that out of pocket. And um, they have no, nothing like no payment plans or anything like that. You literally have to pay sixty grand up front or you don't get service. So that's just not possible. And then the um, cardiologist that... The, uh, the cardiac surgeon that um, the cardiologist recommended who gave the second opinion was based out of California and his quotes came back between two and four million dollars and once again you have to pay that money up front with these people. You, there's no payment plans because you're an international patient. Some doctors are willing to do payment plans, some doctors aren't. This one was not. Clearly, I am not a millionaire, so I don't have between two and four million dollars to fork out for this. It's just, it's a lot of money. And I certainly don't expect people to pay, like raise two and four million dollars. It's just not feasible. So um, I had mentioned that I was looking at cardiologists around Canada and our children's hospital had mentioned that he was going to go to Toronto Sick Kids. Uh, I spent the entire next day after I made that video researching and researching and researching every single pediatric cardiology surgeon that I could find in Canada and I sent out emails. Not only did I find out where they worked, I sent them an email to find out their knowledge of Williams Syndrome. I found out what kind of schooling they had, I researched the schooling, I looked for any publications they were a part of, I looked for whatever awards they received, like I really, it took me hours, it took me all day, I did no work all day, that's just what I focused on. And I am very happy to say that I have found a surgeon that I am going to ask for when we go to the IWK, our children's hospital. And that, that's who I'm going to ask for when we fly from there to Toronto. He, um, I emailed him and his email response just really struck me. He said that he has an extensive knowledge of Williams Syndrome and he has treated 
severe Williams syndrome patients before, which would happen to be Weston if this um, second opinion is correct. Weston would be on the severe spectrum. So he has treated these patients before with good outcomes. He knows the risks of surgery and anesthesia. And um, they also work with one of the top cardiologist interventionists, I think it's called, intervention cardiologist, which is a cardiologist that doesn't do surgery. So that's what Weston's um, cardiologist is, and that's what Dr. Collins is. They do the cardiac catheterization procedures, but they don't actually um, perform like open heart surgery or something like that. So... I spent the day today because I'm still like I'm still a little nervous right because I go to the top guy in the world for Williams syndrome and he can't give me anybody that he recommends in Canada because he's never worked with them personally before so he can only give me who he's worked for or worked with and I'm nervous because it's not these people so I spent all day today because the kids are with the grandmother um, all day today looking at YouTube videos of the Sick Kids Hospital and I'm telling you I honestly feel so much better not a hundred percent but I feel so much better with the information that I found the surgeon like all the stuff that you can find on YouTube um, they're one of the top I think it said top three pediatric hospitals in the world I'm not sure if they're like number one or number two or number three like what what number they're at, but I know they're up there, so in the world, which makes me feel phenomenal. Um, now, maybe Dr. Collins would have a recommendation for the surgeon that I'm getting if he actually personally worked for him and or worked with him, and luckily for Dr. Collins, this is going to be his first experience, so hopefully he'll have good things to say because Dr. Collins will be following along um, with the surgeon and he is Dr. I think it's pronounced Hanjo, H-A-N-J-O. He's Japanese so it might be pronounced completely different but uh, I'm quite satisfied with my pick on the surgeon and I hope that our children's hospital didn't pick anybody else because I'm just gonna flat out refuse and say no I've done all the research I I'm good I'm confident in this decision that I've made and I will won't accept anything else I think I've made it pretty clear that I don't settle for my children. I will move mountains for them. Like I said in my last video, I'd sell my kidneys and go into millions of dollars of debt for my child if I could. Um, but thankfully that doesn't, that doesn't need to happen. And I think the doctors at our children's hospital are just going to have to understand that. And not to sound like a cocky jerk, but... I know my child. I've had a gut feeling ever since he was diagnosed. The gut feeling has been um, validated by one of the world experts in Williams Syndrome. And he has a very good track record of being right. Like, he actually writes the guidelines on how doctors should treat Williams Syndrome. And, like, he wrote a publication on risks of anesthesia use with Williams Syndrome children. So he knows what he's talking about. He, he's, he's seen tons of MRI images and echo images from thousands of people across the world who've come directly to him for um, second opinions. So he knows what he's talking about and he's telling me he needs surgery. So I'm, I'm, there has been a mosquito in here ever since we got back from PEI or housefly rather. And it's driving me batty. Seriously. Anyways. Um, so yeah, when he tells me that Weston needs surgery, I 100% believe that Weston needs surgery. Hopefully, he doesn't have the coronary artery stenosis. He never did say that he 100% had it. He believed that he was 50% or higher to have that. Fingers crossed that he does not. But everything else is going to need to be repaired. So the severe... Um, pulmonary artery stenosis which goes out to the lungs and the severe aortic stenosis which most Williams syndrome kids actually have that problem and they need it to be repaired plus he has um, the thickening of the left side of his heart I think they said and it's called hypertrophy 
cardiomyopathy. So they're going to like shave away at that. Like that has to be done. So that's why I say I'm not 100% sure that we're going to Toronto. This freaking mosquito or fly. I'm not 100% sure that we're going to go to Toronto. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure. It's just our children's hospital has to confirm that yes, you and Dr. Collins are right. He needs surgery. So we're going to send him there. Um, people have asked about starting a, a, like a GoFundMe page, like saying we should start one and they would help contribute. Um, that's probably most likely going to have to happen as much as I don't want to admit it. Um, I found out through the disability social worker that I would be covered for everything, but nobody in my family would receive help. So Ellie, um, I would have to find another way for Ellie to get there. So she would have to fly. Um, his dad would have to get there. Like, it's just, I would fly with Weston and everybody else is on their own type of thing. I has, I still have to pay for Ellie's daycare. And now it's going to have to be like five to seven days a week with care. I'm going to, if I stick her with family, I'm going to have to pay for, um, a compensation for lost wages or like if they're willing to say okay that's okay but I still have to pay for my lost wages so as much as I hate to admit that we're gonna need some help we're gonna need some help I have to swallow my pride and admit that however um, I'm not willing to start anything until I receive official word on the 30th that yes he's going to Toronto um, I have no idea how long he will be at the Children's Hospital until he gets flown to Toronto. I don't know if he'll be discharged for like a week or two until they get things coordinated with Toronto. It's all in the seriousness of what the cath procedure shows, what the picture shows. Um, I don't want to raise a bunch of money and just be like, huh, we got lucky, we're not going to Toronto, although... If that were to happen, Weston's eventually going to need surgery because his stenosis happens to be getting worse, not better. And um, I think if if his children's hospital said that he did not need surgery, then I would just get Dr. Collins to intervene. And once he saw those pictures and got an opinion of his own, I would just get him to refer us to sick kids and kind of be done with the children's hospital. I mean, it's not that I don't, I don't love them. I think they're really great in other areas, except except for this particular area. So, yeah. Um, like I said, I really appreciate all the offers to help. I deeply appreciate all the offers to help. But I don't want to start accepting money until I figure out exactly, like, what I need. Because I don't want to, like, ask for anything more than what's necessary. I want to find out what I'm being covered with, if there's any like meal compensation. She couldn't answer those questions for me. Um, she'll give me an answer Tuesday because Monday's a holiday for us. So sh like for meal compensation, I have no idea. Um, I'm going to try to get into the Ronald McDonald house. That's still $15 a day. That's not unreasonable though. But the problem is, is the Ronald McDonald house is insanely full. And it's also really hard to get a bed there. You have to call every day, every day, every day. And um, I don't know where Weston will be for the first couple of days when he's in Toronto waiting for surgery or if they're just going to fly there and have him in surgery the next day. I don't know any of that stuff. So I do know that I'll have to find my own place to stay unless he has a private room that I can stay in. He cannot stay, or I cannot stay in the critical cardiac care unit once he's out of surgery. He has to be cleared from there, and um, I can stay with him once he gets his private room. But in the meantime, I'm going to have to find something, like somewhere else to stay. Hopefully by that point, the Ronald McDonald House will be available. I think they provide free meals, which is excellent, then I wouldn't have to worry about that. But, um... I really would like Ellie to come eventually to see her brother, but she can't come until he's, I think it's so many days after surgery at least, so there's that. And then when he's discharged, we have to find our own way back to our house. Um, I don't know, I don't think we qualify for Hope Air, so that kind of stinks. 
Uh, yeah, so when it comes time, if Toronto is 100% go, then I will maybe post a link or do a new video. And if you guys want to donate anything, that's cool. If you don't, maybe just share. Um, I really hate to put, like, to ask for this. But, you know, he's my child and I have to swallow my pride and say, I can't be without, like, he needs his mom and I need him. I can't not go. You know what I mean? And I can't do this alone. I can't do it alone. I'm, you've seen, I'm a mess. And obviously I'm going to start um, taking some nerve pills or something, whatever the doctor decides to give me on Tuesday. But I can't do this alone. I need help. And unfortunately, there is no funding for that help to come to me. So I need help. So anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate this is another turned into a long video. And I will talk to you very soon and let you know what's going on. Thank you.